Today we're going to discuss Euler's method. But before we do, let's have a quick review of the idea from last time about slope fields. Remember that the concept is we'd like to approximate tangent lines by using secant lines. Say that we have a curve, x of t, that we'd like to plot as a function of time t. If we're given two points, say perhaps t0, x0, and t1, x1, we can compute the slope of the line through these two points. As one point gets very close to the other, then this actually becomes a tangent line. And so the idea is that we can really approximate our tangent lines by using these secant lines. Conversely, if we knew the slope at every point t comma x, then we can do a reasonable job of sketching the path as a function of time. This is the concept of a slope field. Let's discuss a few examples. First, consider the example where the derivative is zero. This means that we have an object with no velocity, or we can think of this as saying that our position is a constant as a function of time. Here you can see that in this grid, we have on one axis is time, and the other axis is position. As we move along with time, our position remains a constant. This is the black line. More importantly, you can see that at every arrow here, we have a small line that has slope zero. The blue arrows here denote the slope field corresponding to this differential equation. As another example, say that we have a case of an object falling under gravity, but with no air resistance. This means that the derivative is a constant. Because the derivative is a constant, we know that the velocity has to be a linear function. That is, v of t is v0 minus g times t, which is really the plot of a straight line. Here, we can see that if we're given one axis is time t and the other axis is velocity v, then at every point in this grid, we can draw an arrow, and this arrow represents a small line that has a negative slope. That is slope negative g. As we connect all of the arrows together, we then see that we have a straight line which corresponds to the velocity. As a third example, say that we have velocity, say that we have now an object falling under gravity, but we'd like to keep track of air resistance. Notice that the slope, dv dt, will change as the velocity changes. Here we have a grid where on one axis we have time and the other axis we have velocity. And again, at every point in the grid, we can draw an arrow. But now the arrow will change depending on the velocity v. That is, at some points the arrow may be pointing downwards because we have negative velocity. And at other points, this arrow will be pointing upwards because we have a positive change of slope, a positive dv dt. Just like before, if we connect all of the arrows together, then we can find roughly a plot of the solution. Notice that exactly where the arrows form a line where the slope is zero, we find the equilibrium solution. This graph corresponding to the equilibrium solution is, of course, an asymptote. Now let's move on to the main idea for today. We'd like to discuss Euler's method. Do you represent, do you, do you recognize this picture here? This is Katherine Johnson, who was discussed in quite a lot of detail in the movie Hidden Figures that came out a couple of years ago. This is an interesting scene in this movie that corresponds to what we're going to discuss today. In the movie, Katherine Johnson is supposed to, to try to compute the path that will help John Glenn to return to the Earth. John Glenn being the first man to be in Earth's orbit, the first American to be in Earth's orbit. But in order for her to compute this path, she has a little bit of trouble in trying to compute the numbers that she needs. She realizes that she can use what's called Euler's method to get things to work out. I suggest that you view this small clip here so you can get a better idea of what all of this happened, how all of this came about in the movie. But what exactly is Euler's method? Let's give a rough idea. Say that we have an initial value problem, dy dt equals some function f of ty, where initially y at t0 is y0. In general, it's going to be too difficult for us to find an exact solution, so let's discuss how to find an approximate solution. For the moment, say that we have a solution y of t to the initial value problem above. Let's start with our initial value t0, and we'll choose a t1 that is, quote, very near, unquote, to t0. We'll explain now how to choose a value y sub 1, which is, quote, very near, 
unquote, to y of t of 1. Let's consider a secant line through the two points t0, y0, and t1, y1. We'll also consider the line tangent to the curve at this point, t0, y0. Intuitively, we want the slope of the secant line to be equal to the slope of the tangent line. The slope of the tecant line, as you remember at the start of the lesson, is the change in y divided by the change in t. The slope of the tangent line is just the derivative, but evaluated at t0, y0. Since we're dealing here with the differential equation, the slope of the tangent line is just f of t0, y0. So in other words, if we take a look at the change in y divided by the change in t, we have y1 minus y0 divided by t1 minus t0 must be equal to f of t1, y, t0, y0. Solving for y1 gives y1 is equal to y0 plus f evaluated at t0, y0 times the difference t1 minus t0. Of course, this is going to approximately be equal to y of t1. We'll use this to proceed now in a recursive fashion. Now let's introduce what's called Euler's method as an algorithm. Again, consider the initial value problem, dy dt is equal to f of ty, where y at t0 is equal to y0. The first part of the algorithm says, fix a step side h, which we'll, don't, we'll denote by delta of t. Recursively, we're going to perform the following four steps. First, let's compute the slope f of t sub k, y sub k. Second, we'll compute the new time step t sub k plus 1 as t sub k plus our step size h. Third, we'll compute the new value y sub k plus 1 as y sub k plus f of t sub k, y sub k times our step size h. And finally, we'll just return back to step 1 and do this all over again. We'd like to plot these points, t0, y0, t1, y1, and so forth, which will give us an approximate plot of the graph of the actual solution, y equals y of t. This technique of finding an approximate solution is known as Euler's method. Let's give an example to explain how all of this works. Let's consider the initial value problem, dy dt equals 2y minus 1, where y of 0 equals 1. First, let's compute the exact solution of this differential equation. We observe that this is a separable equation, so we can use some of the techniques that we've discussed earlier in the course. We'll start with the differential equation, dy dt equals 2y minus 1. Let's factor the right-hand side just to make our life a little bit easier. Now let's bring all of the y terms to the left and all of the t terms to the right. We'll integrate both sides to find log of absolute value y minus a half equals 2t plus some constant c. We'll need to solve for y, so we'll undo the logarithm and the absolute value to find that y minus 1 half equals a new constant c1 times e to the 2t. And finally, we can solve for y of t as 1 half plus c1 times e to the 2t. We can figure out this constant c sub 1 by remembering that y of 0 equals 1. We find immediately that c1 has to be 1 half, and therefore y of t is exactly the function that we claimed here at the top of your screen. So let's recap. We have our initial value problem, and we know the exact solution for our initial value problem. Next, let's try to find an approximate solution using Euler's method. Here, we're going to set up a recursive sequence where t0 equals 0, but tk plus 1 is t sub k plus delta t, y0 equals 1, but yk plus 1 is yk plus f of tk yk times delta t. For the moment, we're going to choose a step size delta t equals 0 0.1. Here, we'll list some values of our sequences in the following table. You'll see here that it's a lot of work numerically to get this table to work out, 
And let's try to walk through step by step what's happening here in this table. Let's start with k is equal to zero. This here is along the first row and tells us the initial values of our differential equation. We know that t sub zero equals zero because the initial value problem stated that y of zero equals one. Similarly, y sub zero equals one because again, the initial value problem states y of zero equals one. We can now plug in to find the slope f of t zero comma y zero by using the fact that f of t comma y is two y minus one. Finally, we can find the exact value y of t sub zero because we know the exact value of our solution which is y of t equals e to the 2t plus 1. So this explains the first row when k equals 0. Now let's move to the next row when k equals 1. We can compute t sub 1 by these two properties. First, t sub 1 equals t0 plus delta t. And second, we chose delta t equals 0 0.1. Now let's compute y sub 1. By definition, y sub 1 equals y0 plus f of t0 y0 times delta t. Well, we've already computed f of t0 y0. This is what appears in the row above. And remember that our choice, delta t equals 0 0.1. Now we can compute the new slope f of t1 comma y sub 1 by remembering that f of ty is 2y minus 1. And finally, to finish off the values here in the row, we can compute the exact value y of t sub 1 by remembering that t sub 1 is 0 0.1 and y of t is e to the 2t plus 1 over 2. We can continue this way in this fashion to see that we have a list of the t sub k's and y sub k's and we have a list of the exact values y of t of k. Let's take a look at what's called the error. This tells us how far away the actual value is from the approximate value. You can see here in the column that's on the very right in red that these numbers slightly get larger. They start at 0 0.00, then move up to 0 0.04, and then finally move up to 0 0.59. That is, even though y sub k is very close to y of t of k, the error here gets larger and larger as k increases. Let's now plot all of these points and plot the actual solution to see what does all of this mean graphically. On this screen here, you see a plot of the actual solution versus a plot of the approximate solution. In blue, we plot y of t, which is e to the 2t plus 1 over 2. And in gold, you see the points tk comma y sub k. Here, we've actually plotted the 10 points that we had on the previous slide. You can see here that the gray points, the gold points, don't exactly match up with the blue line when t gets larger and larger. This is exactly the error that we discussed before. So here for our step size of 0 0.1, we do have a good approximation, but it could be a little bit better. On this slide here, we've actually decreased the step size. Instead of delta t being 0 0.1, we've placed it in half so that delta t is equal to 0 0.05. Now you can see not only are there more points, t sub k comma y sub k, but these gold points do a much, much better approximation of getting closer to the actual solution y of t. At this link here, you can play around with a Google Doc to get a better idea of how to actually write all of this in a code on a computer. In this Google Doc, we simply use the spreadsheet to explain how to compute all of the values in the table from above. We highly recommend that you play around with this Google Doc to get a better idea of perhaps how to come up with some of these numbers on your own. But now let's go back to our original motivating question. What about hidden figures? Is it really the case that Katherine Johnson used Euler's method to actually compute all of these paths? It turns out that there was a mathematician who was a consultant for this film. Dr. Rudy Horn 
was a professor at Morehouse College. He worked directly with the director to write all of the mathematics. Here, there's a wonderful clip where he discusses a little bit of the background behind how he worked the mathematics into the film, how he worked with the director, and even how he coached the star of the movie, Taraja Henson, in writing the mathematical formulas in her various scenes. Unfortunately, it appears that while Orla's method is a viable idea, really Rudy Horn just simply came up with this because it sounded good for the movie script. But we certainly recommend that you take a closer listen to this audio clip to get a better idea of some of the other mathematics that happen in this movie. Thanks very much for watching.